Hello and welcome to another episode of B-Tech. Today we're going to be following up with the, the Honda Pilot. Um, we talked about how it was getting the catalyst inefficient code and how it's been burning oil and we changed the PCV valve just to catch everybody up. Um, this car is a 2011 Honda Pilot, um, has about 140 something thousand miles on it. We got it about two years ago. It's been great except for that it does burn about a quart of oil each month. Now that's more than I would expect, and we got some great comments on the first video uh, where many people brought to my attention that the VCM, as you can see it said VCM there, right on the engine cover, um, which is a system that turns the ECO light on, eco light, on the car, and it's supposed to be deactivating, I believe, the rear bank of cylinders, which causes problems with rings getting stuck. Uh, I imagine that leads to some inefficient sealing and oil burning. Um, now, <clears throat> I did some research on VCM controllers. I put a link in the description where I got this one. It was about 100 bucks for the kit. Uh, this is what it includes, some zip ties, um, something that connects to the positive terminal, and then this connects uh, on the temperature sensor, which is, let's see if we get a good shot of it, that sensor in the top right. So we're going to unconnect that, and we are going to connect in our VCM controller following these instructions. And then we are going to do some testing. I'm going to let you know what happens with the oil burning and how the car is running and my gas mileage goes up or goes down. Let's get started. We're going to start just by <clears throat> removing the engine cover using a screwdriver and the plastic screws here, which are, I believe, a quarter turn. I'll find out now. Yeah, they turn a quarter turn. Release on the front and we just pull off in the back. There's our motor. Should give us enough space. We can also take the intake off, but I think we'll have more than enough space. Let's just reposition the camera so you can see. Alright, so this disconnected it. There's a clip on there. You have to squeeze pretty hard. Now we have harness visible. So in the instructions, it says very clearly um, to start by plugging the VCM into the wire harness side, not into the sensor side. I make a big deal about it. I'm wondering, you know, when I see instructions like this saying not to skip and to avoid touching the motor with the controller, um, and that makes me wonder if they've had grounding issues in the past where this thing somehow grounds out into the motor. Um, so we're gonna take that seriously and make sure that we fasten the VCM um, after connecting it to the harness but before connecting it to the coolant sensor with the zip ties to make sure that it's out of the way of, of touching the motor. So let's do that. So we're going to use the male end of the harness which is the one where you can see the connectors poking out like that. That's the female end and this is the harness side. Put the camera down for a second. Alright, I heard a click. So now, before connecting this end to the coolant sensor, just down there, we are going to, as the instructions tell us, we're going to put the zip ties on so that this thing is up and out of the way. Hard to get your hands in here to do all this stuff, but it's a little bit harder when, just because I'm trying to be in front of the camera so you can see. You don't want to tighten this stuff too much, just enough to Hold it together there. Flip this off. Now, if my understanding is a lot of these are actually just resistors. Uh, you can get online to bypass the VCM. This one supposedly has bypass functions, which means it's also looking at the actual motor temperature. And if it overheats, it's supposed to actually bypass itself uh, to let you, as well as your ECU, know that it's overheating so that you can you know, turn off your car and make sure you figure out why it's overheating. All right, so the next step here is connected to the coolant sensor and um, then connect the positive to the, the positive terminal of the battery. The view of that, I want to connect that white piece of plastic down there is the coolant temperature sensor. So we are going to connect that. Got to do a lot of this by feel just because uh, how tight it is in there. All right, it's sliding on, now it's connected. And you can see that the actual controller is being held up and out of the way of the motor. We have this long power cable, which it now wants us to connect to the positive terminal of the battery. So it looks like down here, so there is a, once we pop this plastic up, you can see on top there, there is like a 10 millimeter to me that we are going to undo. And then 
connect the positive right to it. So you can see we are bolted in there now. Then we will route this up and under, and then we'll zip tie this to the wire harness here. Hold it there, nothing. Not going heat man on it. All right, now we have the positive connected into the battery. You know, the slack is zip tied to the harness there. We have this connected in between the temperature sensor here and the harness away from the motor. Happy with all that, fire it up and take her for a spin and then give you a long-term report. All right, so the first thing that I noticed when we added the VCM delete was that it threw a code um, saying the engine temperature was high. The instructions said something like that might happen. It didn't say which code, but it said it's pretty common for these things to throw a code when you first set it up. So you can even wait for it to, to go away or you can clear it. Uh, we just cleared it using uh, the OBD2 Fusion software, which I just showed. Uh, the next thing that I'm noticing here, which is kind of interesting, is see if we can get a good shot of it. The temperature gauge, the, the motor's completely warmed up. The temperature gauge is slightly lower um, than it would be typically for when it's um, completely warmed up. Uh, these gauges are frustrating, of course, because it's just H to C. It doesn't actually give you any real information beyond that. Uh, that's just how cars are, unfortunately. But it is, from driving this thing a bunch, I know that that is lower than it should be. So that temperature sensor that it's bypassing it is sending a lower temperature signal um, that not just the ECU is getting, um, but it also looks like it's used to this gauge here since it's keeping the gauge at a, at a lower value. So very, very interesting. Overall, with a little bit of driving, uh, the car feels smooth. The ECO light, Eco light, has not come on yet. Uh, so we got to drive it more to get information on gas mileage, etc. So looking forward to providing those updates. Stay tuned. Until next time.